the house of the Lord on this, the second Sunday in Lent, as we celebrate the wonderful promises that God has given to us. First of all, who are we and what are we about? We are St. John's, growing in Jesus and spreading his saving grace. And we have a memory verse for this month. Uh, this is the last Sunday for this memory verse. And that is the second commandment and the explanation. And shall we recite it or read it together? You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Next month we move on to the third commandment and explanation, so you can check in your catechism and begin memorizing that this week if you'd like. This Wednesday night, our Lenten series continues, Return to the Lord, and I remind you of the uh, devotional booklets and also the little calendars that are on the tables. Uh, please pick them up and make use of them. Um, we also begin singing with masks this Wednesday evening. Next Sunday, March 7th, Dave DeMeester will be here to sing for us. And everyone enjoyed listening to him sing in the past. Uh, certainly bring friends and neighbors as well. And today we do have a uh, basket set up for the regular Mercy, Love, Hope, Happiness door offering, which is taken uh, the last Sunday of each month. We do turn to the first hymn for today. It is found on page three. It is, Let us ever walk with Jesus. And we ask you to read the whole portions. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure. Though a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirits lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims here are home above. Full of faith and hope and love, let us do the Father's bidding. Faithful Lord, with me abide, I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus, and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness, where he is there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All discomforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your hope. Help me bear your joy to know. Thus gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin. And the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate to heaven. Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with you on high. Let us also live with Jesus. He has risen from the dead, that to life we may awaken. Jesus, you are now our head. Where do you go? Where you live, there we shall be. In your presence constantly, living there with you forever, Jesus, let me faithful be, thy eternal grant to me. We would ask those that are able to rise for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and 
receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Truly, the Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. So as called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn to the intro from the Psalms. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. We will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. We bow our heads in prayer. O God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your power, by your mighty power, defend us from all adversaries that may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> You may be seated for the reading of the scripture lessons or appointed for the day. They're printed for you, for you to follow along and to take home and consider during the week. The Old Testament reading for today comes from Genesis chapter 17. God makes a covenant promise to Abraham. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you, and may multiply and pray you. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, throughout your ge their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you, and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be your name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Here we read of grace. Christ died for the one God. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to even die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Hands those that are able to rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel, as we join also in the Alleluia verse. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders, and the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God and the Father before all worlds, God of God, our life of light, very God, very God, the God of my name, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who is our sinner. 
return to the hymn, Lord, Thee I Love with All My Heart. And please join in the bold verses. Lord, Thee I Love with All My Heart, I pray Thee ne'er from me depart. With tender mercy cheer me. Earth has no pleasure I would share. Yea, heaven itself were void and bare if Thou, Lord, were not near me. And should my heart for sorrow break, I trust in thee and nothing fear. Thou art the portion I have sought. Thy precious blood my soul has brought. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Lord, my God and Lord, forsake me not. I trust thy word. Yea, Lord, t'was thy rich bounty gave my body, soul, and all I have in this poor life of labor. Lord, grant that I in every place may glorify thy lavish grace and help and serve my neighbor. Let no false doctrine me beguile, let Satan not my soul defile. Give strength and patience unto me to bear my cross and follow thee. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Lord, my God and Lord, in death thy comfort still afford. Lord, let at last thy angels come, to Abraham's bosom bear me home, that I may die unfearing, and in his narrow chamber keep my body safe and peaceful sleep, until thy reappearing, and then from death awaken me, that these my eyes with joy may see, O Son of God, thy glorious face, my Savior and my fountain of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend, my prayer attend, and I will praise thee without end. We turn again to the Old Testament lesson for today from Genesis chapter 17. And talk a bit about the unbelievable promises that God has given. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you, and may multiply you greatly. And Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. This is the word of the Lord. Have you ever taken a shortcut? Has it ever worked? Too often, shortcuts end in disaster. There's a dead-end road, or the two-lane road with heavy traffic, so it's no shortcut at all, and actually takes you longer to travel. What about the shortcut when you're trying to fix something in your home or on the car? You think you have an aha experience, and then it breaks again, and it costs more to fix the second time. Shortcuts, it seems, don't usually work. What we see in Abraham today is a desire to take a man-made shortcut. He wants to do things his way. He's figured out a way to have an heir. After all, he's 99 years old. He and Sarai are not going to be having children, naturally, it seems. It's just too late. So Abram has a plan for an heir, and even God can save face. Here's Abram's plan. Have Ishmael as his heir. Ishmael is already born. Abram loves Ishmael. He practically begs God for this, praying to God, Oh, that Ishmael may live before you. Abram knows that he and Sarai are too old to have a son. So just make Ishmael the promise, the heir of the promise. This is Abram's plea and his own answer to the problem. But this shortcut shows Abram and Sarah's weak faith. Abram doubts that God can still keep his promise to 
provide an heir. This would be impossible, too much to ask. And so, taking matters into his own hands, Abram wants to fix the problem for God. He thinks of what he thinks is the perfect solution. God, let's do things my way this time. And don't we sometimes do the same thing? We have a problem in life. We all have problems. We as the people of God go to him in prayer. We pour our hearts out, telling God that we believe his promises. But as soon as we pray, Amen, don't we start looking for our own solutions, our own answers, the ways that we think the problem should be solved. And just like that, there is worry, there is fear, and there is anxiety. Give it to God and take it right back again just as fast as you can. And isn't the real problem here that we just don't trust God and His ability to answer in a way that is best for us? Instead of trusting God, who may give us an answer we don't like, we want to do it our way. We want to take a shortcut just like Abram. So God comes to Abram face to face. God doesn't come to yell at Abram. God comes to Abram to strengthen his faith by repeating the promise to him. If Abram thought it was impossible, unbelievable, that he and his wife could have a child in their old age, he must have been astonished at the unbelievable promises that God made to him. First, God changes his name from Abram to Abraham. Why? He would become the father of a multitude of nations. And Sarai got a new name too. She would be the mother of many nations. God would not work this promise through Ishmael, but he would keep his original promise by giving Abraham and Sarah a son of their own, even in their old age. So God was going to work two miracles. First, Abraham was going to have his own son. And second, he would make his family grow and grow literally into many nations. God was going to bless Abraham with descendants, generation after generation. In fact, God would bless him so that this would be an everlasting covenant. The covenant would be everlasting because of one of those descendants. You see, to be an everlasting covenant, it would take a special descendant. Who, like Abraham, a human descendant, was also like God, who had no end everlasting. For one of Abraham's descendants would be the Savior, Jesus Christ. Finally, God would give to Abraham the land of Canaan, literally the promised land for his future descendants. This promised land would be an everlasting possession. It would be an everlasting possession because there'd be a land far beyond anything on earth. There'd be a promised land that would last forever in heaven. Well, God fulfilled his promises to Abraham and Sarah, and in so doing, he has kept his promise to you and to me. Jesus Christ has come for all people, for all nations, for all generations. He came to bring the promise of God to its ultimate fulfillment. And he did so to remove the sins of our weak faith, of our doubts, of our constant desire to do things our own way, to solve problems without regard to God's will. He did so by his own suffering, his own shed blood to cover our sins, his own death to pay for the wage of sin, and his glorious resurrection to conquer death forever. Through Jesus, 
The promises of God to Abraham and to us are fulfilled. By faith in Jesus, we are grafted into the family of Abraham as those who believe. And God has changed your name too. At the day of your baptism, you received the Holy Spirit. The day that your sins were forgiven. The day that you became an heir of eternal life. And God gave you a new name. You are now his own. You are now called Christian. And God keeps his promises to you. He's taking you as his child. He strengthens your faith as you confess your sins and believe the promises of forgiveness given through baptism, through the Lord's Supper, through his precious word of God in the Bible. Through faith in Jesus, he brings us to the promised land of heaven where we have everlasting life. Yes, God made promises to Abraham. The promise seemed impossible, unbelievable to an old man and his wife. But God kept his unbelievable promise to Abraham. And he keeps his unbelievable promises to us, too. We now have a new name. We now have the forgiveness of sins. We have an everlasting covenant with God. And we have a promised land of heaven. What a great God and Savior. Truly, we are blessed, unbelievably blessed, as a child of God. We don't need to make a shortcut of our own making. We can wait upon our gracious God, for He truly does the impossible. Amen. And may God's peace, which passes all of our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in through faith in Jesus until the day that He calls us to be with Him forever in paradise. We turn to the prayer of the church found on page 11. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For grace that we with Abraham hear and follow the call of faith, and that God counts such faith as righteousness, as once Abraham was commended to God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For grace that having received the new birth of water and of the Spirit, we daily manifest this new life and show forth the fruits of this new birth in word and in deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For grace that our government and those who lead us be equipped with wisdom and courage to do what is pleasing in God's sight. For peace among the nations and for the protection of the unborn and the frail against threat and abuse, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace that the forces of evil be hindered and for freedom that the gospel be preached in every place, and to every people, that they become with us sons and daughters of Abraham by faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace that we give thanks to God for all of his gifts and blessings, for his mercies new every morning, and for generous hearts that we return to him the tithes and offerings of money with our song of praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for grace that we who approach the Lord's table be prepared to receive there the holy body and precious blood of Christ, and so be nourished and strengthened for his service. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for your loving care of the big back of her who continues to uh, heal in therapy. Be also, Lord, with Lynn Meyer and her family as her mother, Jean, died this week. Be with all of your servants, and especially with those whose first names we mention before you now.
Bless your servants with the gifts of healing and strength and comfort when and where you know it is best. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For there are people we know among our family and friends who need to know you or know your love more clearly. Hear our silent prayers for those whom we know among our family and friends whom we name in our hearts. Send the Holy Spirit to them to open their hearts to your loving grace and open our hearts and mouths to speak of our joy in trusting you as our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And we pray for those who celebrate birthdays this week, including Ashley Ruder and Keaton Simons, Samantha Rasmussen and Grant Jackson, Bobby Ruder and Justin Engelking. For as we are your children, Lord, renew our faith in your forgiveness, your presence in our life, and our response of faithfully living as your child. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy, and grant us your grace always. Amen. Normally at this time we'd be receiving the tithes and offerings of God's people, but during this time of COVID we receive them as you enter and exit the sanctuary. Turn to the preface for communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. For the countless blessings you have so freely bestowed on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, into the flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, Abraham our Father, 
to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And make us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world away. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. Have mercy on us, Jesus Christ, and grant us peace, O Lord, we pray.